Welcome back. You know, Fame, growing up in the 90s in Princess Town, one of the things we had to worry about a lot of things, maybe water, whether electricity would go. One of the things that we rarely had to worry about was crime. Yeah. Uh, it was a really, really safe town growing up for when I was growing up. That's a problem now that a lot of people are facing, and I'm glad that we have not one, but two sergeants to talk to us about crime. So guys, welcome to the show. Thanks a lot. I'll start with you first, Sergeant, uh, Sergeant, Sergeant Jagu. Um, Crime is something that, as I said, I'm not sure what your statistics show you, but it's up. It's it's creeping up in Princess Town. Maybe not at an alarming rate, but it's creeping up. Um, in response to that, um, Mr. Bichu, um, if you would permit me, I would um, refer to the statistics I have here in respect of that. Because like as you indicated, that crime is creeping up. Um, permit me to mention here that in relation to crime, Crime is categorized administratively and statistically according to the type of crime, the severity, and the penalty to be imposed upon indictment by law. So, for instance, there are crimes that are referred to as serious reported crimes. For example, robberies, larceny of motor vehicles, um, sexual offenses, rape, incest, and so forth. Those particular types of crime carry a penalty by law upon indictment of five years or more. They're normally referred to as arrestable offenses and capital offenses. Right, the penalty varies upon the particular offense for which a person may be charged. Now, it is further subdivided into minor crimes, for example, possession of marijuana, which carries a penalty lower than the five-year period within the jurisdiction of the magistrate who is here in the matter. Just, just given an example. And then further, further broken down into a minor offense, for example, obscene language, throwing missiles, um, and, and other offenses. All right, and then there's also the traffic offenses. Now, statistically, for the period from the present time, from the beginning of the year to, the, to date, um, we would have had 215 serious crimes reported, of which 88 were detected, persons arrested and charged, and before the court. Uh, we would have had, in terms of the minor crime, for which I gave the example of, for instance, possession of marijuana, um, uh, amongst other offenses, we would have had 200 cases that were reported or detected of which a total of 170 persons were arrested and charged and before the court matters to be determined. Sergeant, how, I know generally uh, this is maybe easier for you to estimate as opposed to maybe having the specifics for previous years, but uh -huh. when you look at these numbers, uh, how does that fit into the historical picture? Is crime slowly creeping up or particular types of crime you're seeing more often? Well. As you, you would have mentioned, Mr. Richards, with respect to the historical picture, and Mr. Beach, you would have alluded to it earlier. He would have stated that, you know, growing up years ago, crime may not have been as high, and he would have indicated that statistically it appears to have been higher. However, um, I beg to differ. You see, um, there are various elements that affects it all. We would have spoken about the infrastructure earlier. I mean, proper infrastructure would not only um, assist everyone holistically in performing their duties and doing what their daily routine and their daily life, but it also assist the criminals who would, at, who would attack persons, who would rob persons, in trying to hastily escape. So, I mean, is everything all intertwined in one? But um, not just statistically, but the, the whole situation as it relates to crime, it relates to population explosion as well. And as the population explodes, and persons unable to obtain jobs, employment, and so forth, and social pressures, Persons may, based on their individual disposition, may be leaning towards a life of crime. And that is where the police comes in, in yes. terms of restraining these individuals and bringing them to justice. All right, Sergeant Ramnath, do you see um, any interconnection between, um, for example, particular problems that people may have in certain communities and a rise in crime there? Are there trouble spots that you all are beginning to identify within Princess Town? Uh, one of the mandate of the TTPS by the Commission of Police is to provide a degree of safety and security to all citizens of Trinidad and Tobago, and by extension, the citizens of Princess Town. I've been a police officer for close to 40 years and come from a rural community. There are certain issues that the police will have an interaction with the, the, the people in the area will know that you have to deal with in a holistic way to get a, a good results and defer per persons from a life of crime. One of our targets right now is targeting the youths. Targeting the youths, we have 
Right now, in fact, we have the community council working along together with the police youth club, working along with government organization, non-governmental organization. I will touch with the, the police youth club. Right now, we have a camp. We have approximately 70 young children and a two-week camp, which is finishing on the 23rd in Princess Town. They have different training, different sessions, different categories of lectures that will be taking place with different adults. And we'll target them in certain areas to mold them, groom them, that they will differ from a life of crime. Ms. Ms. Ronald, if you don't mind me just uh, interjecting there, because I, 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 I'm privy to that camp and great work on it. I just want to ask uh, as well, there's a, the, the, the detection rate seems to be better than many other communities that we've talked about. Um, when, it, when people are charged, how does the justice system move from there? Is it, uh, when, it, when it heads to court, is that a problem? Uh, no, we don't have a problem with that. We, um, as a, I, I am one of the person who deals specifically with files. Yeah, case management. File, case management. So we, we have a, 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 a fairly speedy process. That all officers are trying to attend court on a regular basis. When matters are fixed for trial, we get, they are disposed of according to the virtue of the courts. So there's not, uh, we've found in other communities a backlog which causes the judicial system to sort of move a little bit slower than it's supposed to move. I don't think we have a, a problem within the Princess Town jurisdiction as it relates to matters being determined before the courts. Yeah, I just want to broaden the conversation a little bit as well. Uh, the business community plays a huge role when it comes to crime as well. Mr. Passad, over the years, have you or any of your colleagues within the business community been affected? We, we have, like all businesses, been subject to crime. Um, we have had to invest significantly in private security services. And that in its own is a negative because it impacts significantly on your operation costs. Um, but the Princess Town area, um, there's something that the Princess Town police is doing that possibly that other areas um, is not doing. But they have had a significant, uh, from, the from the numbers you could see the detection rate is significantly high. And uh, they have been able to provide a significant level of rapid response. Never there has been situations, whether it's um, petty burglary or, 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 or pilfer, um, pilfering or any other minor problems, we would always get a quick response. And it is from the, bu from the business community, there's always um, welcoming and it's also, also comforting to know that you have a, a police service that is efficient and effective. Mr. Matura, in terms of manpower for municipal police, uh, is that adequate? Do you all have a good relationship with the TTPS? We, uh, and I'll just go back a little. When I would have started, uh, maybe in, two, in 2010, we would have, um, the municipal police would have had a force of about maybe four officers. Today, in the present, we have about 20 officers. And in September, we'd expect another batch, maybe of nine or so, to come on board. And I can tell you under the um, leadership of Inspector Guzman, who is the inspector by us, today the municipal police has really teamed up with Central Police and both with Princess Town and said Madling, and they have already added value. And um, if you look at from January to present, the statistics for ticketing alone, um, like 260 tickets, you would look for, for mobile patrols and, and, um, and foot patrols, 360 and 400 and something respectively, um, the figures. And from January to present, those figures are very good. When you compare a force of about just 20, it's almost comparable maybe to a cent to central police. And the, so the municipal police has really been doing well. And um, on, they have teamed up as well with central police with a lot of sting um, exercises and roadblocks. And I think they would have added value tremendously. And I know central police can obviously vouch for that, especially in our markets. I mean, for years, you would hear municipal police is just, you know, they go always say market police, you know, just in the market on the street. Today, they have widened that scope. And, and, and one of the things that we have to, to look at too, they're not only seen about um, on crime. You have um, garages, you have illegal dumping. And recently we would have, uh, one of our officers um, would have been praised for that from, um, from the minister in our cooperation as well. So they, there's a broad aspect of things. And, and obviously the more manpower you have, the more you can do. Mr. Lewis, I know in Maruga, your police station seems to have become something of a multi-purpose building. Explain that to me. Maruga police station is very, uh, 
it, it houses the soldiers, it also houses the Coast Guard, and we also, it, it's, it's also a community center. So the police in Maruga has a little more to do than the regular police, I would say. I've never seen anything like it in any other parts of the country or heard of it. So sometimes the police also have to go out in boats, which is, I guess, not according to their job scope. And um, I'm thinking Maruga is, as because of Maruga's location and the lack of resources, structural and, and, uh, and otherwise, perhaps if the port is done and perhaps if Maruga's promise, uh, the promised port basically was supposed to facilitate the Coast Guard, the um, immigration, customs, and excise, as well as the, with the immigration, customs, and excise, that would also alleviate the Maruga police station from having to deal with so much immigration problems because, come on, we are the middle of the southern coast of Trinidad. You're going to have immigration problems to deal with. So if that is done, then our police station and our police post wouldn't have that amount of responsibility. And then, and remember, Maruga is a very huge geographic area. What are some of the particular crime problems that Maruga faces, especially because of that geographic expanse and the difficulty in patrolling all of that? Uh, well, some of our m uh, main crimes recently would be the immigration. So you see immigration buses coming to Maruga a, a lot, and sometimes you go into the police station, but I'd have to go there often because of the Maruga Museum. Keys are kept there. So when, you, when I get there, it will just be, you know, about 20 immigrants or 12 immigrants just sitting there on the chairs, and you would think, well, perhaps it's a meeting or, or something of the sort. So we have the immigrant that uh, the, the illegal port of entry we also have some cannabis planting plantations. Well, that has always been the case in Maruga. And um, so a few robberies, not, not very much. And for the year or for the past year, we have just had five murders. So the, 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 you know, the crime is very low. And the, I guess perhaps the police station is underutilized. And then again, the courthouse is also close to. So that is some, some of the things that perhaps could address some of those issues. And because of the courthouse being closed, you would have to go to Princess Town uh, proper, which is like an hour away, you know, so. Chairman, you had something you wanted to add? Even the Princess Town court is closed <laughs> as well. <laughs> so, so, so oh, well, some juggling there. So then, Sergeants, you were, you were saying that you don't particularly have issues in terms of getting matters dealt with expeditiously. Um, but with all of that court juggling, do you see a lot of um, dumping coming from areas outside of Princess Town proper to that one court? And do you see a lot of juggling happening between courts to get it all resolved? Uh, no, we have we have put strategic measures in place that um, every morning the su supervisors are responsible for the courts will liaise with the outstations within Area East, um, based on the amount, the amount of prisoners to be transported, proper uh, mobility is utilized to have the prisoners properly taken to court on time. So we don't, we don't have a problem as we raise, so say, for transportation to and from the prisoners. But most of our prisoners who are in custody comes directly from the prison. Okay, so the geographic expanse may be being difficult uh, in terms of uh, policing some of those larger areas and getting people to a court that is accessible at a particular point in time, but that expanse is definitely a pro when it comes to agriculture. And that's something we want to move into when we come back from this next break. We're going to be focusing on the Tableland pineapple farmers and how their product is taking flight. Stay with us here on Guardian Media's Community Talks.